Hey guys, welcome to another video. I am working on a landscape project today. This area is right behind our gazebo. There's a pond right behind me, a hawthorn tree, and a dogwood. Uh, you might remember seeing this area in one of our garden tour videos that we uploaded not that long ago. Uh, there was a huge yellow juniper when we moved in uh, that we had taken out. It was so big that it was pushing these perennials over and it was growing into this pathway, so it really needed to go, which leaves me with a pretty much a blank slate, which is so fun. I'm going to be taking out most of these perennials because they're really old and they're tired and I really just want to do something different. Uh, there's a little grass back there that is coming out, but I am going to leave the ground cover that's right here. There's three daylilies that I like. I think they're really sweet. They're kind of a light yellow color and then the boxwood. So what I'm going to do is clean it out and lay out my plants and kind of map out what I'm going to be doing. Cleanup is done, now I'm gonna move the plants in. These are the most amazing sedums I have ever seen. Huge! Okay, so I've got all my plants laid out, but the only problem that I can foresee is that the hibiscus foliage is the same color as the sedum foliage. And so that's an awful lot of dark colored foliage. So I'm gonna go get another grass and also a hydrangea that I've got sitting in my driveway. And I'm gonna try those in place of the hibiscus to see if it looks a little bit better, a little bit more contrast. I think it looks nice to have the uniformity of the three grasses. I like that the grasses are not all really close together but that one bumped back kind of gives it, it draws your eye back, but kind of makes it all one cohesive idea. Okay, so let me talk to you about the plants a little bit. This area gets a lot of sun, and I don't know if I already said that, but it gets sun until really late in the afternoon. Today is overcast, so we're lucky. Um, the grasses are Desert Plains Penicetum. They're a zone five to nine grass, so they're a tough Penicetum, which is amazing. I love the seed heads on them. They're about at mature height right now, uh, but they will spread out. So I did make sure to give them plenty of room in here. If we look in here, they'll have plenty of room to spread out at the base. See all that room around them? Both of them here. And the one in the back, of course, has ample room. Um, the next layer down, this is a rock and grow maestro sedum. And like I said, these are the most fantastic sedums I have ever seen. These are already mature size. So while it may look like I am packing plants in here, like too many plants, these are actually pretty much full grown plants. So I know that they're not gonna get overgrown and overtake this space anytime soon. The other one here, I wanted another evergreen element in here. And this one is an uh, Anna's Magic Ball Arborvita. These ones stay really small, like 15 inches by 15 inches. Really sweet yellow accent right here. Uh, the daylilies that I kept, I'm actually gonna move this one over here. So I'll have a nice little drift of daylilies right in front and then these two won't be competing. The next plant here, these are a Daisy May. Daisy May daisies. They are super, super um, pretty. They've got really large flowers on a shorter variety of daisy. You know, the Becky daisies, the Shasta classic daisies, they get pretty good size, pretty tall, but these ones will stay nice and low, like 12 to 24 inches, and they don't spread out quite as quickly. And then for the last layer down here, I've got a ton of Dianthus. This is a variety called Sweetie Pie and it has really sweet kind of ballet pink, um, I think they're just a light pink bloom. And so I thought that that would be really pretty to fill in this whole area right here, all the way down the pathway to the last plant, which come right back here and I'll show you. So that Dianthus will come and fill in, fill in this whole area and then this, there's a lo and behold blue chip um, butterfly bush, not juniper. There's a blue chip juniper too, it gets me confused. It only gets about two feet by two feet, which is perfect because I still would like to be able to see the pond beyond the plants right here. So that's it for this area. So what I'm gonna do is get all of these planted and then I'm gonna be running some drip irrigation because there's no irrigation to this area right now. Here we go.
Okay, so I'm done for now. It's not quite done. I still have drip uh, irrigation to put in and mulch, but I decided when I was planting that I wanted to put in some bulbs before I get all of my stuff on top of the soil. So these pockets in here, let me show you, like right here and right in here and back in there, there's a few open spaces that while these plants are growing and filling in, I wanna put in some tulips and daffodils and things like that. So I'm gonna go get some of those before I'm all done, but I wanted to show you what it looks like um, at this stage. I think it looks really, really pretty. I think the plants go really well together. Um, I'm excited for this dianthus to grow up and start to flower. So next year I should have a layer of pink and white and just prettiness. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this little transformation. And uh, if you're not subscribed to our channel, make sure to subscribe because we will do a second video where I'll show you all the bulbs and we'll show you the end result of this whole project. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.